Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Brian Ahern, Ella Raines, and Alan Curtis in the Universal Screenplay, The Phantom Lady. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. We must thank Edgar Allan Poe for the modern mystery story. But I'm sure this genius of a century ago never dreamed that his brainchild would turn into big business, that authors, publishers, magazine editors, and producers of plays and motion pictures by the hundreds would labor into the wee small hours for the avowed purpose of scaring the daylights out of customers. Today, the mystery is, is the favorite form of American entertainment. So many are written that they can't all be good. But here we can afford to wait for the best. And we have a classic of the art tonight. It's a screen hit called The Phantom Lady. It's making the cash box jingle out Universal Way. And starring in the play, we have Brian Ahern and two of Universal's most promising players. The brand new discovery, Ella Raines and Alan Curtis. An odd thing about The Phantom Lady is that we let you know who... The murderer is rather early in the proceedings. But that very thing makes this manhunt, or rather lady hunt, even more exciting. The young lady in the play turns out to be a very competent detective, thereby filling a rather serious lack in world literature. Up to now, our hard-working writers have given us some immortal names, like Sherlock Holmes, Philo Vance, and Bulldog Drummond. But very few feminine suits. Naturally, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap are only too happy to help supply this lack, because our sponsors have known right along that the ladies of America were sleuths of the First Order. All of them, at one time or another, have tried to solve a very elusive mystery, the mystery of a lovely complexion. Millions and millions of these beauty detectives all arrived at the same answer, at the same solution. And if you haven't guessed the answer, it's Lux Toilet Soap. And now we can start guessing on the secret of the Phantom Lady, because here's the first act, starring Brian O'Hearn as Jack, Ella Raines as Carol, and Alan Curtis as Scott Henderson. The engineering firm of Scott Henderson Incorporated is never rushed with business, but on this stifling afternoon in mid-August, it's much too hot to work anyway. Ruthie, the receptionist, is lazily manicuring her nails. Carol Richmond, secretary, absently thumbs through a pile of bl blueprints. And in his office, Scott Henderson, the other member of the firm, is saying goodbye to an old friend. Oh, what a lucky guy. A second-rate sculptor like you gets an assignment in Brazil, and I, New York's best engineer, has to sit in his bake oven. Well, you're doing all right, aren't you, Scott? <laughs> yeah, I'm just kidding. I sure wish I was going with you on that boat tonight. Well, I'll drink up one extra ocean breeze and a planter's punch. Just for you. A boat to Brazil. Well, you've certainly earned it, Jack. Say, what will you work on down there? Well, oddly enough, I don't quite know. I don't know if they want to buy what I've got or if they have a commission in mind for something new. No way of telling them when you'll be back. No, no, it's all pretty indefinite. <laughs> Gonna miss you, Jack. Thanks. I'm sorry you can't come down to the boat tonight. Yeah, I feel like a heel. Oh, cut it out. You promised to take Marcel to the show, didn't you? Just that it's been so hard to get tickets, and now that I've got them, I hate to disappoint you. Yeah, I'd be crazy, too. Come in. These are the blueprints you wanted, Mr. Henderson. Oh, thanks, Carol. Oh, Carol, I want you to say goodbye to a very lucky fellow. <laughs> yes. Congratulations, Mr. Marlowe. Have a good trip. Thanks, Miss Richmond. Take care of the great engineer while I'm gone. I'll try. Goodbye, Mr. Marlowe. You call me lucky, eh? That's a very pretty girl. Huh? Oh, oh. Yeah, not bad. Well, Scott, I've got to close up the apartment, so I guess I'd better get going. Goodbye, old man. Right with now, then. And knock him cold down there. <laughs> All right, I'll try to. Give my best to Marcella. So long, Scott. Say, Mike. Yeah? Another scotch and soda. You sure, buddy? You ain't looking so good. I've had exactly one drink. Do I look drunk? All I said was, you ain't looking so good. Maybe it's the heat. It's not the heat. I had a little fight with my wife. Then maybe you need another drink. I slammed the door and walked out. I told her, well, whatever I told her, it's none of your business, is it? That's right. Here. 
Say, uh, where's all the trade tonight? You got me. Too hot to think about it. Yeah. What time do you knock off? Huh? Oh, 1 a.m. Uh, too bad. I've got a couple of tickets. I was going to make you a present. Fine. Hey, uh, your only other customer looks as if she wants some service. Yeah. Yeah, miss? Pack of cigarettes. Any brown. Okay. Will you look at that hat she's wearing? What a hat. Yeah. Here you are, miss. Miss, I don't mean to annoy you, but, uh, are you doing anything tonight? Now, look, buddy. These tickets, I thought maybe you could use them. They're no good to me. No. No, thank you. I just thought maybe you could call up a friend. I'm afraid not. Oh. Well, I don't suppose you'd go with me. Please. Really, I didn't mean anything wrong. I just thought... All right. I'll surprise you. Yes, I'll go with you. Swell. Oh, uh, what time is it? Five minutes after eight. Yeah, there's plenty of time. Say, Max, what do we owe you? By the way, uh, my name is... Please. No name. You want me to go, that's the way it has to be. Okay, that suits me. Dollar sixty, buddy. There you are. Keep it. There's a taxi outside. Let's take it. Uh, you live in New York? Yes. Well, then you're used to this heat. You know, there's something that gets me about this town on Saturday night. Did you ever watch the people's faces? It's fun. There's a typical New York character for you. Mike Falano. The taxi driver. That's his picture in the hack license. Look, I'm... I'm afraid I'm not going to be very good company. You should relax. You know, you shouldn't be alone any more than I should. You're right. You're smiling. Now, that's more like it. Let's have fun, and maybe the show is as good as they say. I hope so. I'd like to laugh. It would be wonderful to laugh again. There's a ten-minute intermission. Ten minutes. No smoking in the theater. Please step out into the lobby. No smoking in the theater. Ice cold orange drink. Ice cold, folks. Plenty of time during intermission. Cigarette? Thank you. You like the show? Wonderful. Say that Apparently hat of my yours hat... created... <laughs> <laughs> well, we both agree it's quite a hat. The star of the show didn't think so. What do you mean? Well, the singer, Montero. I understand she's so terribly proud of her exotic hat. Well? Didn't you notice? The hat she was wearing is exactly like mine. I'll be done. No, I was talking about the drummer. He was giving you the eye all of his every opportunity. Yes, he... He made me feel a little uncomfortable. But not as half as uncomfortable, I'll bet, as you've made the great lady Montero. I'll bet she's burning up, and not from the temperature. <laughs> On stage, everybody. Curtain, Miss Montero. Oh, uh, your hat, Miss Montero. Oh, you noticed it too, huh? Oh, what? All I meant is... Oh, I'd throw it away. I will never wear it again. Who is she? Who is that woman? No one dare copy my hat. I will not have it. Well, here we are. This is the bar, isn't it? Yes. I met you here, and here I'll say goodbye. Uh, why can't I buy you a nightcap? Please. You've been very kind. Thank you. I must confess, I'd, I'd like to know who you are. No, it's better this way. Well, I guess I'll go on home then. Good night. Good night. Marcella? Listen, Marcella... I know you're awake. I saw your bedroom light from downstairs. Now, come on. I want to talk you, to you. You, Scott Henderson? Who the devil are you? Say, what is this? What's up? Let me go in there. My name is Inspector Burgess. The man at the bedroom door is Detective Hill. Where's my wife? In there. Let him go in, Dave. Oh. No. I'll have to ask you some questions, Henderson. Go ahead. When was the last time you saw Mrs. Henderson? Oh, around seven. Have dinner at home? No. You ate out with your wife? I intended taking her to dinner in the theater, but... Oh, she changed her mind. A little squabble, maybe? For a long time, things hadn't been right between us. I came home early from the office, 
got dressed. Then she told me she had no intention of going out with me. She kept laughing at me. We had an argument. I asked her for a divorce. Oh? She said I could do what I pleased, but she wouldn't even consider a divorce. Making a patsy of you, huh? Don't say that. It was just that she was too spoiled and too beautiful. Henderson, uh, where were you tonight? Say about 8 o'clock. In a bar? Alone? No, I met a woman there. I asked you to go to the show with me. Who was she? I don't know. She didn't tell me her name. <laughs> well, she didn't. What's that got to do with it? You're a very neat dresser, Mr. Henderson. A nice tie you're wearing. Tie? Look, what are you trying to do to me? I never saw a man so nervous. Give me a break. Marcella's dead. What's the difference what my tie looks like? Your wife was strangled with one of your ties. Not it's so tight, I had to cut it loose with a knife. Know what bar you were in? Well, I could find it. Well, it's kind of late. We have to lock you up, Mr. Henderson. In the morning, we'll let you find that bar for us. Let's go, Dave. Uh, this is the place. And Selmo's Bar and Grill, huh? Where's the bartender? Should be here any minute. Dave? Yeah? Tell the janitor to leave the keys. Okay. Funny you can remember the bar, but you can't recall what the woman was like. We've been over that all night long. Now leave me alone. I'm tired. Yeah. Remarkable, though. You're with a woman for hours, and you don't know who she is or what she looks like. I told you. She was about 30. She had sort of brown hair, and, oh, she wore a funny hat. That's all I remember. She asked me about her earlier last night. I might have been able to tell you more, but now she, she's a complete blank. What's the idea of getting me up at this hour? He's here, boss, the barman. I only watch the evening Come here, come here. I'm Inspector Burgess. Ever see this man before? Huh? To me, a face is a face. Take a good look. It's important. Uh, I don't know. Don't look at me. Look at him. Come on. Think hard. Yeah. He was in here last night, I think. There, you see? What time last night? I'd go on at eight. It was sometime after eight. How much after eight? I don't ask the customers to punch the clock. Sometime after eight. Ask him about the girl. Ask him. How about the woman who was in here? What woman? The only other person at the bar. A woman. I'll do the talking. Are you sure there wasn't a woman here last night when he was in here? He sure. sat next to her. Sure, I'm sure. She was wearing a crazy hat. To me, a dame is just another drink. But if you remember me, why can't you remember her? Now, look, bring the dame back here. Set her down at the bar like you say she was last night, and I may remember. But there were only the two of us. She ordered a pack of cigarettes. We left here together. Lay off, will you? Bring her down like I said. Okay. Okay, Anderson. That's all, bartender. Sorry to drag you down. Guy, he's coming in here all the time. But he must remember. Come on. If you will go into that uh, booth, Senor Malo, your call from New York is coming through. Already? Gee, that's really wonderful service. Here. Yeah, thanks very much. That's amazing. Thank you, Senor. Hello? Hello, uh, Miss Richmond, is that you? Yes. This is Jack Malo. Hey, I just heard about Scott. Is there anything I can do? Why, you're on shipboard, aren't you, Mr. Marlowe? Yes, of course. It was in the ship's newspaper this morning. Oh, it's awful, Mr. Marlowe. Unbelievable. It's true? He's charged with murder? Yes, but he didn't do it, Mr. Marlowe. It's just impossible. Oh, of course it is. Here I am, his best friend, and when he needs me most, I'm of no use to him. Uh, Miss Richmond, will you please see Scott today? Tell him I'll take the first boat back if there's anything I can do. Oh, thank you, Mr. Marlowe. I'll be in Rio in a few days. Now, be sure and write me there at the Continental. I... I don't think there's anything you can do, but just hearing from you will make Mr. Henderson feel so much better. I'll write you immediately. The Continental. Yes. Thank you, Miss Richmond. You've cheered me up already. Goodbye, Mr. Marlowe. Goodbye. That's the Carter Cab Company garage? That's right. I phoned you about a driver named Mike Ferlano. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Mike, a couple of gents to see you. Hey, what about? That's the driver, Inspector, you see? I see nothing yet, Henderson, except that you've got a very erratic memory. You want to see me? Yeah, uh, did you have a haul last night from a bar called Anselmo's to the Casino Theater? Anselmo's? Let me see. Yeah, I did. Remember this man? Me? You remember me? It was him, huh? You tell us. Yeah, him. Was he alone? Yeah, I think so. There was a woman with me. You must have seen her. Hacking for eight years gives a guy a memory. If you was with a woman, I'd have noticed. You're sure now? Sure. There was no dame with this guy in my cab last night. 
Thanks. All right, come along, Henderson. We got a date at the casino theater. Why can't they remember her? I tell you, she was with me both times, at the bar and in the cab. They recognized me. Why can't they remember her? Maybe because she wasn't there. That's a lie. She was. She was there. So we'll try the theater. That stuff you told me about her hat, dames don't forget hats. Maybe that Montero dame can save your hide. Let's go. I'm sure disturbed now. Who are these men? This man is a police inspector, Miss Montero. He wants to talk to you. It's important, Miss Montero. I'll only take a minute. This man, Scott Henderson. He saw your show last night. Now, do you remember a woman sitting with him wearing a hat like yours? A hat like mine? Oh, really? This is too funny. No woman wears hats like mine. But she did. And you kept looking at her. No. You go away. This really is insulting. I am an artiste. I sing. I dance. I do not watch my audience. Think, Miss Montero. It's very important. There. All my hats are there in the closet. You look. I see anything, Henderson? A lot of hats. No, none like her. Oh, what woman besides Montero could wear those hats and not look like, uh, how you say, ridiculous? You're lying. You! You! Get him out! Get him out of all right, here! All right, all right, we're going. Sorry to trouble you. Any luck, boss? No. Where to now? Maybe you can tell us, Henderson. She was real. And now you're trying to tell me she never existed. You need a drink, Henderson. We do, too. Yeah. Then we'll go back to headquarters. You better get some sleep and then get a good lawyer. You're going to need them both. Objection overruled. Will the prosecution continue, please? Thank you, Your Honor. Let me repeat my statement. The defense asks you to believe that Scott Henderson was in Anselmo's bar at five minutes after eight that he couldn't possibly have been in his own apartment two minutes before, at which time his wife was murdered. Again, I say, very clever, but not clever enough. The defense has introduced witnesses. Each claims to have seen Henderson at the places he said he was, yet not one, even remotely, remembers the woman with him. Where is this woman who was with him five minutes after eight? Who is she? Has she at any time been on the witness stand? No, because this woman... Who alone could furnish Henderson with the alibi he has so flimsily constructed simply does not exist. Scott Henderson murdered his wife. In a blind rage, he took a necktie, dropped it round her throat. And... Will the foreman of the jury please stand? Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. We find the defendant guilty of murder in the first degree. Miss Richmond is here, Mr. Henderson. You can have five minutes. Thanks. Hello, Carol. Mr. Henderson. Oh, I... I don't know what to say. Skip it, Carol. I'll be all right now that I know where I stand. Last night, for the first time, I was able to sleep. Surely you're going to appeal. With what? A set of old blueprints in my grandfather's watch? Well, it's a question of money. Oh, thanks, Carol. You're swell. No, it's not just the money. It's question of that girl. I've done everything. Hired detectives, advertised on the radio, in the newspapers. Everything possible was done to find her. She simply vanished. Why don't you let me write, Mr. Marlowe? Maybe he can think of something. I won't drag him back from Brazil. That's his big chance down there. And suppose I did. What good could he do? But you just can't let that verdict stand. You've got to fight. It's no use. If I'd been in that jury box, I'd have agreed with him. Somebody has to go on looking for her. Maybe there never was such a woman. Just my word against theirs. Maybe I just imagined it. Stop talking like that. You couldn't kill anybody. Thanks, Carol. That makes you a minority of one. Well, what about you? What are you going to do? I haven't decided yet. Well, whoever you work for will be a pretty lucky boss. If you keep your bobby pins off the floor and the seams in your stockings straight, if you don't, he'll fire you. Uh, Carol, if you feel like a train ride sometime, you might visit me again. I'll have a new address tomorrow. A big country estate up the Hudson River. I'll come. Of course I will. Thanks, Carol. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Mr. Henderson. <laughs>
Hello, Miss Richmond. May I come in? What do you want? Don't you remember me? I'm a tired policeman named Burgess. You're very proud of yourself, aren't you? Not especially. Found a new job yet? No. I've got other things to do. Like going to Anselmo's bar? You've got that barman scared to death. Have I? Why? I haven't even spoken to him. Maybe he has a guilty conscience. I think that's more down my department, isn't it? Maybe it is. But Mr. Henderson is all alone. No one to do a thing for him. He has no money, no friends. Well, I have to do something. You could have come to me. You forget, Inspector. I think Scott's innocent. You do? So do I. What? The evidence I got is pushing him right into the electric chair. I know that. I've been doing a lot of thinking since the trial. His alibi, that woman, only a fool or an innocent man was stuck to an alibi like that. A guilty man would have been much smarter. Aren't you just a little late? Yeah. Well, the case is closed, officially. But I'd like to help. Maybe we can do something. You and me. Well, how about it? Thanks. Thanks. In a few moments, Mr. DeMille presents Brian Ahern, Ella Raines, and Alan Curtis in Act Two of Phantom Lady. And now, a soldier and his girl. I sure hate to say goodnight, Mary. It's late and I do have to get up early, Jim. Never mind, dear. We'll see each other tomorrow. It's a long time off. Oh, gosh, I'm a lucky guy to have a girl as pretty as you, sweetheart. And a few minutes later... Oh, goodness, it is late. Am I sleepy? Little Mary mustn't neglect her beauty care. I want Jim to keep right on saying he likes my look. So now for my luck soap facial. It's easy and quick. Turn on the water. Cover my face with plenty of nice, creamy lather. Work it in gently, but thoroughly. Rinse with warm water. Then splash on cold. Pat dry with a soft towel. Now when I touch my skin, it feels so fresh and soft. And it is. Well, the musical effects are extra. But there it is. The Lux Soap Beauty Facial clever girls everywhere depend on for gentle, protecting care. Care that really leaves skin softer, lovelier. In recent tests, actually three out of four complexions improved in a short time with daily Lux Soap facials. Famous Hollywood stars say these facials with Lux Soap rich active lather do wonders for the skin. Why don't you try them? Ask for Lux Toilet Soap tomorrow. And if you find your dealer is temporarily out of stock, he's sure to have more soon. Remember, Hollywood beauty soap is worth waiting for. We pause now for station identification. This is CBS. The Columbia Broadcasting System. Act Two of The Phantom Lady, starring Brian Ahern as Jack, Ella Raines as Carol, and Alan Curtis as Scott Henderson. Sentence of death hanging over Scott Henderson, Carol Richman and Inspector Burgess race against time to find the only person who can save his life, the woman with a funny hat. The woman no one will admit having seen, the Phantom Lady. Carol starts at the top of the list with Mac, the bartender at Anselmo's. What do you want, miss? Nothing. I didn't call you. But you keep looking at me. Do I? Now look. I want you should cut that out. This is the third night you've been in here, and all you do is stare at me. What's the matter? Does your conscience bother you? Cut it out, that's all. Now, cut it out. You've been following 
follow me all the way uptown. Yes. What's your idea? You got something to tell me. No, now go on, beat it. It's late. Hey, miss, is that guy bothering you? No, it's all right. Scott Henderson's going to die. You can stop it. I ain't talking, see? You ain't got nothing on me. Now get out of here. Hey, what's he trying to do, miss? Start an argument. Let him alone. Okay, lady. Who bribed you, Matt? You want to find out anything? Ask the guy that's given to me. I... Uh, I gotta go home. Who was it, Matt? Let go of me. Let go of my coach. Mister! Yeah? I want to call the police. Oh, Will yeah. you hold on to this man for me? <laughs> it's a pleasure, lady. Let go of me, do you hear? I don't know nothing. Let me alone. I'll get him, lady. He can't get far. Hey, please! <laughs> Let go! How is the inspector? Hospital just phoned. He never regained consciousness. Max dead, Miss Whitman. But he knew something. Sure he did. Well, forget it. Who's next? A drummer in the orchestra. Oh, yeah, Cliff Milburn. How can I get to him? Well, I'll get you a seat in the theater, right in front of him. He's not what you'd call a gentleman, so play up to him. Use another name, get some flashy clothes, flash on some perfume, and go to work. I see. I'll call you the minute I get anything. And don't take any chances, Carol. It may be pretty risky. Well, this is it, baby. Gee, Cliff, I'll bet you think I'm off. Letting you pick me up like that. Ah, go on, forget it, baby. You go for me and I go for you. That's all that counts, honey. <laughs> You're sure cute, Cliff. Hey, what do you know? You haven't even told me your name. See the initials on my purse? J H. That stands for Jeannie, Cliff. Jeannie Harper. Jeannie Harper. Hey, you really go for me, don't you, baby? That's great. That's the way it should be. Yeah. But I think you're getting the wrong impression of me, Cliff. I shouldn't have let you bring me here. To your apartment. Why not? Oh, you know. Now, look. We'll have a drink. I'll change my clothes and I'll take you out of dancing or something like I said. Yeah. I don't know why you want to change your clothes. I ain't dressed up. You stick with me, baby. I'll get you something real classy. Will you, Cliff? Will you? Just name it. Just name it. What do you want? Do you like this hat? I don't like it so much myself. I'll just take you to a car load of hats. Oh, Cliff, you're sure a swell guy. But you wouldn't know what sort of hat would look good on me. Guys don't bother about hats. Yeah. Me, I'm an authority. I get paid for knowing about hats. Yeah, Cliff? Yeah. But what do you mean? You can tell me, Cliff. Ain't I your friend? That's your life, aren't you? Oh, brother, can you look this? <laughs> yeah. What do you mean about getting paid for half? Here, look. Boy, what a pile of dough. 500 bucks, baby. 500. Where'd you get dough like that, Cliff? Like I said, for knowing about hats. I don't get it, Cliff. Or maybe you'd rather not tell me. Ah, uh, some guy, give me it. What for? That's for you, he said. Five hundred bucks if you forget about the hat in the day. No matter who asked you, say no. That's what he told me. Hey, uh, you got a cigarette? Sure. Over there, in my purse. Thanks, kid. Thanks. Hey. Hey, what's this? I'll get them for you, Cliff. I... No, you stay there. In your place, this piece of paper. Homicide Bureau says Cliff Milburn's top drummer. You see no theater, 826. It's just 498 West. Everything about me. They said somebody's after you made me believe your life. I do, Cliff. I do. I let you kiss me, didn't I? I came here, didn't I? You made me believe your life. Cliff, that paper don't mean nothing. Get away from that lamp. No, Cliff. No. I'll get you for this. You wish you never even... All right, turn the lights off. What you wait getting out of here, you dirty little double crosses. again. I've been standing outside for hours. Waiting to see you, Cliff. I noticed you met a girl outside the theater tonight, Cliff. An exciting girl. She seemed to like you. You brought her here. Oh. She, yeah. She, she left a little while ago. Yeah. Rather in a hurry, wasn't she? Uh, see, she left her purse. Yeah? I'll, uh, I'll give it back. No, no I'll take it, Cliff. Oh, there's initials. J.H. J for Jeannie. 
Harper. Jeannie Harper. That's her name. She was magnificent. She loathed you, but she went with you. She would have humiliated herself to make you talk. I didn't tell her nothing. Cliff, why lie? Here. Here, you can have your dough back. It's almost all here. Now, come near me, please. What do you mean? What are you thinking about? About hands. About how interesting a pair of hands can be. They can trick melody out of a piano keyboard. They can mold beauty out of a piece of clay. They can bring back life to a dying child. Yes, a pair of hands can do inconceivable good. Sure. Sure. And yet the same pair of hands can do terrible evil. They can destroy, whip, torture, kill. I wish I didn't have to use my hands to hurt another human being. No. 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 Don't make any noise, Cliff. No noise. Oh. Hey, Scott. Just sit there behind the screen, lady. He's coming. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Henderson. Oh, Carol, thanks for coming. How are you? I'm gaining weight. I'll be in fine shape for my big date. Only 18 more days. Please don't talk like that. Sorry, but I don't feel very sociable these days. You happen to be the only one that comes up here to see me. I'd come often, Mr. Henderson. Except I can be more helpful to you in New York. Yeah? Any luck? No. First it was Mac. Last night, Cliff Milburn. The drummer? Well? Milburn remembered the hat. He'd been bribed too, Mr. Henderson. But he caught on. There was a fight. I managed to get away. Phoned Inspector Burgess. We went back to Milburn's apartment. He was dead. Strangled. Carol. I tried, Mr. Henderson. No, Carol. You've got to promise to keep out of it. Let's not talk about it. You've got to promise me. I've got to do what I can. I won't let you. I'll write Burgess. And don't call me Mr. Henderson. Even the guards call me Scott. Look, I'm, I'm grateful. More grateful than you'll ever know. But you can't waste your time knocking your pretty head against a stone wall. You should be out having fun with some fellow. Don't tell me you're not looking love, Carol. Well, look at you. I hit the nail right on the head. Oh, come on. Who is he? My boss. Well, I didn't even know you had another job. Oh, gosh, that's, that's fine. Yeah, that's swell. I think so. Now, tell me, who, who? Warden gave permission for another visitor, Scott. Who? Jack, Scotty. Jack Marlowe. Gosh, I'm glad to see you. When did you get in? This morning, I flew in. Oh, hello, Miss Richmond. Oh, Mr. Marlowe. Scott, why didn't you send for me? There was nothing you could have done, Jack. Nothing. Well, I'm here now, and something's got to be done. Something will be done. Look, they give visitors only five minutes. Tell me, how was your trip? Are you famous? Do they like your work? You're not in prison, and you want me to tell you what a good time I had in Brazil? Oh, Scott, I can't tell you how I feel. I want to know all about it. As for me, I'll take Carol back to New York with you. She can give you all the details. Come on, now. What about you? Is that a date, Carol? I should say so. <laughs> okay, then. Well, they bought five subjects. These are built a new park in Rio, and they wanted something... The cab driver's left town. So our last hope is that Montero will talk. Montero? You know, star. Oh, yes, yes. You mentioned her before. <sighs> you only knew how much your coming back means to Scott. And me, too. Well, I just couldn't stay in Brazil with this happening to him. He's my best friend, Carol. Well, go on. I've got to have all the details. Well... The show closes tomorrow night. Montero's leaving town. We don't get to her right away. Now, you've worn yourself out. I can't... I, I can't think of anything else. Well, this is a man's job. I just can't sit by. That woman... The woman with a hat must be someplace in the city. One word from her and Scott would walk out a free man. But after what happened to that drummer, I'm... Well, I'm afraid for you. Let's not worry about me. Do you think I'd care what happens to me if Scott... I think I knew it all the time. I used to watch you at your desk. And the way you looked at Scott. Eighteen more days to live. I just don't know what to do. Whoever it is, he always gets there first. He's so clever. Yes? There's genius behind such boldness. No. Only madness. Madness? Well, that's a frightening word. What else can you call it? To kill and then go on killing. Ah, but perhaps he hates to kill. Perhaps he only feels horror. I don't care what he feels. All I know is that we've got to find that woman. Carol, as soon as we get back, I'd like to meet Inspector Burgess. Of course. 
We can drive straight to headquarters. And then we'll start on Montero, eh? Yes. I'm so tired, Mr. Morrow. Do you mind if I doze off for a minute? Oh, do you good. Jack. That's better. Yes? Why do you keep looking at your hand? My hand? Oh, uh, I don't know. Habit, I guess. Always afraid something might happen to them. That would be bad for a sculptor. Yes. Yes, I need my hands. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Marlowe. Oh, where's Miss Wisdom? Well, the girl's exhausted. I took her home before I came here. I'm glad you did. Well, looks like we'll have to scratch Montero off the list. We've got absolutely nowhere with her. The show's closed now, and she's going to Mexico. She'd only admit that our woman wore a hat like hers that night. She never will. She's too vain. Or if you had found out the name of her milliner... If, if I'm fed up with that word. I think I'll go out and get good and drunk. Could you delay it for a couple of minutes? I haven't had much of a chance to talk to you. I thought this case would be a cinch. Just get the lowdown on everyone, friends, relatives. Well, I did that. Even on you, Marlowe. Well, I was on the ocean when it happened. Yeah, the SS Volcania sailed Thursday, August 16th at 8.33 p.m., stateroom C, middle deck, arrived Rio, August 29th. What an incredible memory. A lot of good it does, me. No, no, the fact remains that none of you could have committed these murders. No? Why not? You're all too normal. Oh, but the murderer must be normal enough. He's just uh, clever, that's all. All paranoics are diabolically clever. I have met paranoics before. Their insanity gives them incredible egos, abnormal cunning, contempt for life. You make our men sound unbeatable. Maybe he's more astute than we are, but to call him insane, I'd stake my life on it. You might lose. No, I won't lose. And I'll get him sooner or later. It's always simpler when they're insane. It's just that there's so little time left. Someday we'll have sense enough to train the mind as we train the body from birth. Then they won't need men like me. That'll be all right, too. What sort of a job is this, anyway? Hunting down a madman. <laughs> hey, I'm all wound up. Well, let's call it a night, shall we? Coming, Marlowe? What? Huh? Oh, 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 yes. Marlowe? What's the matter? Hey, no, it's, it's all right. I just uh, did a spell I've been, been having them lately. The doctor says they're nothing at all. Sure you're all right? Yes, sir, of course. Look, uh, don't tell Carol. She'll just be upset. Yeah. Uh, you had an idea before. What about that drink, Stu? Yes? It's Carol, Inspector. I've got some news. Why, I thought you went home, Carol. I tried, but I just couldn't. I went to the airport. Why, Montero? Yes, I saw her luggage. There was a hat box. Yes? A milliner's hat box with a name Katisha. Katisha. A very exclusive hat shop, Madison Avenue. Uh, hey, can you meet me there in 15 minutes? You bet. Wonderful, Carol. Goodbye. Well, Mr. Marlowe, we've got a lead. Montero's milliner. Katisha, huh? Yeah. Let's go. The commissioner wants to see you, boss. Uh, well, tell him I'm not here. But he knows you are. It's the Benzali case, boss. Looks like we've got to go to Newark right away. Oh, yeah. All right. Tell him I'll be right in. Well, Mr. Marlowe, I guess you'll have to meet Carol by yourself. I'll do whatever I can, Inspector. Thanks. <laughs> I keep forgetting I'm not on the case anymore. Officially, that is. Uh, tell Carol I'll call her as soon as I get back from Newark. Yes, I'll be glad to. Our hats cost a lot of money, Mr. Marlowe. A good part of the price is to guarantee the client that her hat will be exclusive. Miss Richmond can understand that. And it will never be copied. At least not in this shop. Uh, madame, did you... Oh, come in, Peyton. You made a hat for Montero. Yes, madame. Now I want the truth. Did you ever make a copy of this hat for anyone? Here, here's the original sketch. Oh, madame, I'd never do a thing like that. I believe you, Peyton. There, Miss Richmond, you see? Please forgive me for asking, Miss Peyton. But if you can tell me anything at all about it. You see, a man is going to die. And... I'm sorry. I just can't tell you anything. Thanks, Peyton. That's all. Yes. I'm sorry, Miss Richmond. What? Why, you look all in. How about going home, Carol? Oh, I tried so hard not to build up my hope. Uh, yes, I... Well, Peyton, did you say a man's life? I mean, what has that got to do with a hat? Peyton, what are you trying to say? I copied the hat. She gave me $50. Who, Miss Bickham? Who gave you $50? Miss Ann Perry. She's one of our regular customers. She saw the sketch of Montero's hat, and she asked You me... and I will talk about that later, young lady. Now sit down and give these people her name and address. Uh, Miss Perry is quite wealthy, Mr. Marlowe. She lives uh, somewhere out in Long Island. How do you do? Come 
Come in, please. Thank you. My name is Marlowe. This is Miss Richmond. Miss Terry. We came to ask... I'm afraid you're making a mistake. I'm Dr. Chase. I'm looking after Miss Terry. Oh, she's... She's ill? She collapsed last July. Her fiancé died very suddenly. It was a terrible shock to her. Please, Doctor. I can't go away without talking to her. I've been looking for her for months. Perhaps if you tell me. Someone is going to be executed for a crime he never committed. He has a perfect alibi. He spent the evening with Miss Terry. She's the only one who can say it. Oh, please, can't we see that? All right. But only you, Miss Richmond. No, I'll wait here. I must warn you, Miss Richmond, don't do or say anything to excite my patient. I'll do my best, sir. Come along, then. But I'm afraid you're wasting your time. What do you mean? I don't know what Miss Terry's word can mean to you. I do know that in a court of law it would be worthless. Miss Terry is mentally ill. After a brief intermission, Mr. DeMille returns with Brian Ahern, Ella Raines, and Alan Curtis for Act Three of The Phantom Lady. And now, a lady with a letter. I've just heard from my brother overseas, and what do you think he wants me to send him? Lots of smoke and chewing gum, maybe? <laughs> no, you'll never guess. Here, read it. You say you want to send me something. Try and send me about seven cakes of Lux soap. Make sure it's Lux and nothing else. I can get the other time. <laughs> Goodness, you'd better send off those cakes of Lux right away. I think he wants them. Now, that's a real letter. A letter actually received by the sister of a soldier in our combat engineers abroad. You may be sure those seven cakes of Lux soap are on their way. We hope they reach him safely. One thing's certain. When they do, he's going to get real enjoyment out of using this fine white soap like many another soldier and sailor. Did you know, Mr. Kennedy, that Lux Soap is a bestseller in post exchanges here and in the ship's service stores? Yes, Sally, and it's easy to tell why. Men certainly go for that rich, quick lather Lux Soap gives. Even in hard water, it lathers in a jiffy. I'll bet when a man comes in dog-tired from a day in the field, a shower with Lux Soap feels wonderful. Well, Sally, a refreshing bath with Lux Toilet Soap feels good no matter where you are. On the home front, too. It seems as though Lux Soap is almost as popular with the men in the family as it is with the ladies. I've noticed that, Mr. Kennedy. So here's a tip to women everywhere who do the family shopping. Why not let everyone at your house enjoy the real luxury of a daily Lux Soap bath? It's a thrifty luxury because Lux Toilet Soap is hard mill, can be used to the last thin sliver. And always put your soap in a dish that's dry. Remember, it's patriotic to avoid waste. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. There'll be a curtain chat with our stars after the play. But now act three of The Phantom Lady, starring Brian Ahern, Ella Raines, and Alan Curtis. It's a few minutes later. Carol is face to face with The Phantom Lady, only to see for herself that Anne Terry's mental condition makes it impossible for her to testify in Scott's behalf. In the fading ray of hope, only one glimmer is still alive. The hat. The phantom lady's funny hat. This is a lovely room, Miss Terry. It was my grandmother. She was very happy here. She married the man she loved. I'll never marry. Are you married? No. But you're in love. Yes. He was sick for two days. He'd never been sick before. He was so full of life. We were to be married the following week. I had my trousseau all bought. And a special dress. And a hat for the wedding. They must have been lovely. Do, do you still have them? I don't want to talk anymore. Can't I see them, Miss Perry? I don't want... Yes. You may see them. They're in that closet. Thank you. Oh, how cute. He always said he loved my clothes. But he never saw these. And this hat, Miss Terry. It's beautiful. I wish I had a hat like this. Take it. Oh, no. But if you wouldn't mind, may I borrow it? I'll bring it back to you. You want to wear it for him? Yes. Is he nice? The man he loves. There. Then take it. Keep it. I don't want it. Got the hat. Oh, I can hardly wait to tell Virgin. Last night, everything seemed so hopeless. Last night, you... Oh, 
Oh. Joe, what's the matter? Uh, oh, it's nothing. I, I'll be all right. It, it's just a, a headache. Do you want me to drive? No, uh, it, it'll, it'll go away. I get them so often lately. Oh, it's my fault. We haven't eaten for hours. Jack, you've been wonderful. I don't know what I've done without you. Oh, forget it. Look, there's a service station up ahead. Could we stop there and phone the news to Burgess? Yeah, it's a good idea. Well, don't you bother. I'll get out. No, no, no. Do me good to stretch. Uh, need some gas anyway. Oh, please. Jack, did you get Burgess? Uh, no, no. He's not back from New York yet. Maybe we'd better go straight to headquarters and uh, wait no, for him. No, I left word for him to meet us at my place. We can all have a drink. Oh. <laughs> I almost feel good again. Carol, I hate to discourage you. But what good can this hat do for Scott? What does it prove? It proves that Montero lied. That there is another hat exactly like the one she wore. And sick or not, there's Aunt Carol. But she can't testify. No. But there's such a thing as reasonable doubt. And for the first time in this case, at last, there's cause for reasonable doubt. Yes. I see. Yes. Coffee, Carol? Thanks. My, what a place you have here. You know, when I first came to New York, I lived for two weeks on nothing but coffee and sandwiches. My cooking brings back memories, huh? Yes. <laughs> and then when I got my first job, I went out and bought the biggest dinner I could find. Oh, I was so happy. That's the way I feel tonight. Well, Burgess should be here by now. Yes. Look, how do you think this hat fits the statue of yours? <laughs> Rather smart, don't you think? I've never heard you laugh before. Oh, Burgess will be so excited. I can hardly wait to tell him. Oh, Jack, isn't it wonderful? The silly hat. Save Scott. Burgess can reopen the case. He'll find the murderer this time. And I want to hear the court sentence him as they sentence Scott. You hate him, don't you? I hate him. Oh, oh. Your head again. Is that you? Oh, yes. Lie down on the couch, Jack. No, I... I'll be all right. No, no, I'm sick. I do as I say. Come on. You can get some rest before Burgess comes. Mm. That's better. Oh, I'm a mess. Look at me. You stay there now, and I'll go inside and freshen up a bit. Do you mind? No, no, no. Go right, right ahead. Try to get some sleep, won't you? Yes. Yeah. And I'm see the first breath. Where's the breath? Probably in a drawer, do you think? Jay, my purse. Home must I be all Cliff Melbourne. No. No. Police headquarters. Hurry, please. Hello? Inspector Burgess, please. Inspector Burgess? Oh, this is Carol Richmond. When will he be back? I'm at Mr. Marlowe's apartment. Please send someone right away. Anyone. It's two, three, three, Carol, eight. Come here. I I thought you were going to sleep, Jack. The light. I turned it out. It hurts my eyes. It chokes me. Sit down beside me, Carol. Yes. Yeah. Who were you phoning to? Inspector Percy. Oh. My head's bursting. It's on fire. Give me your hand. Oh, it's cool. It feels so good. Would you mind taking off my tie, Carol? It's so tight. Your tie? Yes. Oh, thanks. No, don't move. Let me have it. I like the feel of the tie in my hand. It's quiet here, isn't it? So quiet. Yes. Far away from everything. That's unique in a city. I hate cities. Noise and the dirt and confusion. And the people in them. They hate me because I'm different from them. I don't belong here. Neither do you. Well, it isn't fair for someone like you to have to suffer. What are you trying to tell me, Jack? Please, let me talk. You'll understand. You are intelligent, Cal. You should be so happy. If only you'd never come to New York. Never met the world's full of men like him. Oh, you can buy nice, stupid people for a dime a dozen. Jack, let go of my hand. 
Why, Carol? I, I think I hear someone out in the hall. Burgess? Don't go, Carol. If it's Burgess, he'll knock. But it's no one, Carol. You see, when we stopped on the road, I didn't telephone Burgess. I only pretended. Please let me go. My hand. You're hurting my hand. You know, don't you, Carol? Ah, I shouldn't have kept your purse in my drawer. It's the purse you left in Chris Milburn's room. I don't know what you're talking about. She was sitting next to me, too. Marcella, just like you are. Only she wasn't trembling. Nothing ever frightened Marcella. I said, you better hurry. The boat leaves in an hour. And then she told me in that cold voice of hers that she never had any intention of going with me. She was just amusing herself. I was in love with Marcella. For the first time in my life, I was in love. But I was always naive about women. She laughed at me. She kept on laughing at me until I couldn't allow her to laugh anymore. I had to stop. Jack, what are you... No! Afterwards, I knew they'd arrest me. I couldn't let them do that. When you're born with my gift, you can't let anything stand in your way. I followed Scott later. I saw him with Aunt Terry. And then somehow she slipped away from me. So I had to bribe the others. It was unbelievably easy. You don't know what you're saying. You were on a boat that night. Oh, no. I went aboard the boat. But I left before it sailed. I flew to Havana and caught the boat there. And then I telephoned you. Burgess never thought of that. I was too intelligent for Burgess. How could you? Scott, your best friend. I'm fond of Scott. But what's his life compared to mine? A mediocre engineer working in sewers, drain pipes, faucets. What's any life compared to mine? Even yours. That will hurt you. You know that, don't you? After me, there'll be others. He'll have to go on killing. On and on until they catch you. I will be the last. There'll be others after me. Oh, no, no, there won't, Carol. You'll be the last. You, you can't help yourself because you're not safe. Stop it. Stop it, I say. You're mad. Help. You'll never say that again. Never. Oh, never. Please, please, your hands, your hands. Oh, no. Open the door. Burgess, Burgess. Jackie. No. They can't take me. They'll never take me. Burgess. Feeling better? Yes. I'm all right now. How did you get here? Why am I alive? What kind of a cop do you think I am, Carol? What? I didn't go to Newark. That was a stall. After what happened to Cliff Milburn, I've been closer to you than a brother. Hill and I have been out there in the hall waiting. You knew about Jack? No, I didn't know. It was just one of those things. I didn't suspect him. Then again, I guess I didn't trust him either. I'd like to talk to him. Too late for that, though. The window we jumped out of was 12 stories above the ground. And Scott? What about Scott? Yeah, I guess I've kind of forgotten about Scott these last few minutes. I hope Marlowe won't mind if I use his phone. I've got to call long distance. Scott's as good as free right now. Good morning, Carol. Good morning, Scott. How do you like the new office? Oh, it's wonderful, but I can't stay. I'm seeing Kepler about the chemical plant. Can't stay? Uh Uh-uh. When will you be back? Might take all day. I can't tell. If I'm not back by six, don't wait. Your first day back? By the way, I left instructions on the dictaphone. Very important. Take care of them for me, won't you? So long, Carol. Hmm. I like that. Carol, old girl, you're really flexible. Dictaphone. Oh, well. Let's get to work. Hello, Carol. Better call Mason and Follett right away and make an appointment for tomorrow. Sure, sure, sure. Renew my membership to the Architects Association. Did that yesterday. And this afternoon, go out and look for an apartment. Oh? The best we can afford. Huh? Uh-uh-uh. Don't hang up. You know you're having dinner with me tonight. I am. And tomorrow night. And the next night. And then every night. Every night. Every night. Every night. <laughs> It's no mystery that we all like the Phantom Lady. And here are three good reasons why. 
Ryan Ahern, Ella Raines, and Alan Curtis. I believe murder is, uh, is a little out of your usual line, Brian. Well, I was getting a bit fed up playing here, OCB. Murder makes a nice holiday. Alan takes his the other way. Yes, I've played villains so long that kids run when they see me on the street. And now here I am, a nice guy for a change. <laughs> <laughs> then I guess we've made everybody happy, including the audience. By the way, Brian, uh, that's a substantial coat of tan you're wearing. Yeah, I came up from my ranch on the desert for a hustle, C.B. By the way, do you think it'd be all right for me to say that the large crop of vegetables I'm raising down there is of the very highest quality, or would you consider that free advertising? Just send C.B. a large basket of tomatoes, and it won't be free. <laughs> that <laughs> fixes the whole thing. Since this is your first appearance in the Lux Radio Theatre, Ella, we'll follow the usual custom and ask where you're from. I've just come from Florida. You whisper that in California, Ella. <laughs> Well, it was my honeymoon, Alan. You see, I was married a year and a half ago, and my husband, Kenneth Trout, is a captain in the Army Air Forces. So we had to postpone the honeymoon until he got back from China and India, a few places like that. We used to go to high school together. No, uh, where was that, in Florida? No, in Snoqualmie Falls, Washington. Hmm, I, I don't believe I've ever been there. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I like the name. Uh, you, uh, did you do any acting in... No quality falls? Well, yes. But in our backyard theater, all salaries were paid in bubble gum. <laughs> <laughs> oh, then you're right at home. CB plays all salaries in soap. Really? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of soap? <laughs> Don't believe a word of it, Carol. But I'd be delighted, Mr. DeMille, <laughs> as long as it's Lux soap. I've always used Lux as a complexion care. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lovely picture that Lux has helped to make. Did I uh, hear that you're making a little trip next week, Mr. DeMille? Yes, I'm going to Washington, Alan. To preview the story of Dr. Wassell, starring Gary Cooper. What's the next play here in the Lux Radio Theater going to be, Mr. DeMille? Now, this is, it's an exciting drama of our Navy, Ella. The Columbia picture, Destroyer. And our stars will be Edward G. Robinson, Dennis O'Keefe, and Marguerite Chapman. This is a story of men who love their ship more than life itself. Of the men who are proud to be called Destroyer Sailors. And as a retired Navy veteran who can't stay away when things are happening, Eddie Robinson delivers one of his finest performances. Well, we look forward to it, C.B., and good luck with the story of Dr. Wattle. Good night. Good, good night. night. Good night, thank you. And applause means you'll be with us again. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night. When the Lux Radio Theater presents Edward G. Robinson, Dennis O'Keefe, and Marguerite Chapman in Destroyer. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Here's a special message from the government to American housewives. Don't throw away a single drop of waste kitchen fat, no matter how black or burnt. They're needed to make life-saving medicines for our soldiers. Pour waste fats in a tin can. Take it to your meat dealer as soon as it's full, and he'll give you four cents and two extra red ration points for every pound you bring in. Don't put it off. The need is urgent. Brian Ahern appeared through the courtesy of Columbia Pictures, producers of Cover Girl. Ella Raines and Alan Curtis are currently starring with Francho Tone in the universal picture Phantom Lady, which was directed by Robert Seedman. Heard in tonight's play were John McIntyre as Burgess and Jeanette Nolan, Stanley Farrar, Dwayne Thompson, Eddie Emerson, B. Benaderet, Charles Seal, Norman Field, Howard McNear, Dick Ryan, Fred Mounier, Eddie Marr, and Regina Wallace. This program is broadcast to our fighting forces overseas through cooperation with the Armed Forces Radio Service. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in again next Monday night to hear Edward G. Robinson, Dennis O'Keefe, and Marguerite Chapman in Destroyer. <laughs>